Alright everyone, welcome back to the table for another tutorial. So we're looking at doing another half sleeve today and it's in the title, we're doing a Japanese style phoenix. And uh, I'm doing this on a smaller sheet of paper, this is an A4 size page. This is so you can see the whole thing. You can feel free to replicate this on a larger size. It's also going to help me get through this uh, a little bit quicker for you guys. Uh, we've also got a pencil that we're sketching with, an eraser and a sharpener to keep a fine point. Now. I've already laid out our general sort of half sleeve uh, template. To do this, you just draw a big oval at the top uh, like this, and then you can draw in this bottom part, which is almost like a skewed rectangle, I guess, uh, you know, rounded edges and corners, and then just erase that center portion. Okay, so to start our phoenix, you generally speaking want to have your phoenixes moving up in an upward direction. Uh, this is that sort of symbolic rising. And I'm just going to pop the head sort of towards the top of our arm here or towards the chest area here like this just by placing a small oval. Uh, now we're just building up some guidelines to begin with. So from there I'm going to come back forward and back like this like an S shape. And underneath I'll do the same thing just coming out forward and back like this. You want it to have a fairly fairly wide neck. I don't want to see too many phoenixes with really skinny necks. So I try and give it a nice wide neck and that will be the head portion there. For the body, you're just going to draw a big uh, sort of egg shape in and it's really similar to uh, the video where I showed you guys how to draw a crane. Really similar sort of body shape to that. So it's sort of wider towards the tail end and then tapers up towards there, uh, towards the neck there. Now, once you've got that sort of uh, egg shape in, we can plan out our wings. So there's going to be one wing here and one wing at the top there that sort of uh, borders off that edge of the sleeve a little bit. I'm going to come forward from this area. Now, in this case, I just want to drop this part of our template down a little bit to make a little bit more room. And you can sort of do this a lot of the time, these uh, Japanese sleeve templates, they're not stenciled and put directly onto the skin. They're to give a rough idea of how these things would look. Uh, and then you could freehand them onto the skin. So coming forward from there with a curved line like this, and that can just loop back and then down like so. And we're going to cut that back and across for the first sort of part of the wing. So it's kind of has that chicken wing look, uh, like, a, like a fried chicken wing. Uh, there's gonna be a couple of layers of feather that come back from there, like a couple of rows of feathers. And then we can bring back the larger sort of portion of feathers. And I like to just link those up like this for now. For the other side, you're pretty much gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bring a curve that comes forward. You don't want this to intersect with your neck, so you can just cut it back a little bit if you'd like smooth it out or whatnot. Make your chicken wing shape like this. Add in your small rows of, uh, you know, sort of secondary feathers there. And then this wing's gonna sort of curve back as opposed to flicking out. This one's gonna curve back a little bit and that's gonna sort of help conform it to the shape of the top of the shoulder area there. Now, once you've done that, we can start placing in a little bit of detail or just a bit of a rough placement for our tail feathers. So there's going to be a gap here between the small feathers and the long feathers. So I like to just start by putting in these little, basically like little leaf shapes that come around the back of the tail section here. In between those, I like to put these larger shapes in and they're kind of going to start small, come out a bit bigger. And I like to flick them off and then get small again on the other side like that. That's, you know, sort of the rough shape for them. And on the inside of these, there's going to be some little loops, like so. And you can sort of play around with how, you know, how they look and come up with your own way of doing them. But essentially, that's how I want them to look. So they're just these little bulbous sort of leaves. Uh, pe uh, far out. There are these bulbous shaped little feathers. There you go. Uh, and they, the reason I say leaves and, and make that mistake is because they have a leaf shape to them, a very sort of near traditional leaf shape to them in this case. Uh, so you can just add these in as you go along. Now, once you've put all those small feathers in, you can add in the long uh, feathers that are typical of a phoenix 
or a peacock because the Japanese Phoenix uh, designs, the way they're drawn, they're actually based off of a peacock. Now, I don't know if this was the actual intention of it, but if you look at a Japanese Phoenix, they, uh, they sure as hell look like a peacock. At the end of these lines, I'm just putting in these long curved lines. At the end of them, I'm just throwing in a teardrop shape, which is gonna give us the, I guess the eye of our feather at the end there, as those peacock feathers tend to have. And you can put a little loop on the inside. Whatever you'd like to do on the inside there is fine, some little details. And then on the outside of this, you can just rough out your shape for now. So just putting in sort of your rough feather shape, adding in your rough thickness for each side of the feather and coming out like that. Now, if you look at these, this area of the feather looks a lot like the small feathers at the back here. So you wanna make the front part nice and bulbous, and then that can sort of taper down into that skinnier section there. And uh, yeah, you're gonna play around with this sort of center portion uh, a little bit later. All right, let's look at adding some of the details to our Phoenix here. This is gonna be very style dependent. You know, it depends how you want this to look. Uh, everyone's got their own way of doing it but essentially I'm gonna measure back a little bit from the front of this uh, oval here and drop in a little oval for my eye, like this. And you can make that into more of an almond shape just by sort of pointing the ends of it a little bit, like this. And I can add another circle and a pupil to the inside of that. So that's gonna give us our eye and that's very basic because we're doing this at such a small size. You can of course play with this and add uh, more detail to it if you'd like. Now coming from this top section of the eye forward is where we're gonna start our beak. And I want that to come forward and drop down uh, pretty, pretty immediately. And then that can come back up and curve uh, under and down like that into the oval. And I think I've done that a bit too long. Now again, this is going to depend on the style. I know some people like to do long pointy beaks, um, almost like a crow beak. And some people will do more curved beaks. That's sort of uh, another style preference that you have to work out for yourself. So just, I like to have this a little bit curved. So curving it back like this, just underneath it, you can drop back with another line that wraps around the back of that to create the back portion of our beak. Like this, and that's gonna give us the front portion of the face there. So dropping down from there, you can add in a, just a smooth line that comes around for like a chin, like this. And I like to add these little feather lines to the face. They're not completely necessary, but they add a little softness to the face and help to contour a few areas, making it less, uh, less boring essentially. Um, just makes them look a little bit nicer in my opinion. But the underside of the beak and the chin, going down into the chin, I like to add in these little fleshy bits, which are reminiscent or similar to that of a rooster. I'm not sure what they're called. It's like those little dangly bits of uh, flesh that hang from underneath. I like to add those. And then towards the top here, so I'm gonna bring the head out a little bit. And then I'm gonna curve out and back like this, okay? And we're gonna turn this into a little feather that sort of sits on top. And this is quite popular, I think, with uh, these Japanese style phoenixes them to have this feather on top. Again, very reminiscent of something like a peacock. And then towards the back of the head there, I wanna have longer sort of uh, feathers that swoop off the head, like this. Okay, so like looking at the neck now, we're gonna come down from the back of the neck, follow a line along, and then trace it along the back of our body to create a center line. And I'm just gonna lighten that up a little bit so you can see it. And from that line is where we're going to put these uh, sort of spiky feathers uh, running down the neck. So I'll do some off towards the right. And then you can have some sort of poking out towards the left. And you want to sort of run these the same way that you would, I guess, a uh, dragon spine scales. Running down the center line or the central uh, area of the body and neck there. And pretty much just running it all the way down. Now for the front section of the neck, I'm going to add some sort of feathering to the front of the neck here. So you can pretty much come down from the front with a fairly solid line under to the body. And at the back of this, you can add in these little overlapping lines like this. And that's gonna create like a feathery texture at the front of the neck there. And if you want to, you can sort of make the front of the neck a little bit more random. Just 
add some more bumps into the front there. Uh, sort of helps give it that soft, uh, fluffy sort of look. All right, now I'm gonna give you an example of one wing and then you can sort of replicate that on the other side. I don't think we need to go through both of them. So I'm gonna come out from the base point here with a curved line and follow, just follow the shape of my wing around to about this point. And then we're gonna follow our chicken wing shape back around, but we're gonna do that with these small overlapping curves coming up and then sort of starting to angle back uh, towards our body a little bit like this until they link up. That's gonna give us that front portion of the wing. For the next section, like I said, there's a couple of sort of rows of feathers here. And I like to sort of try to keep these, uh, you know, more random sizes. Sometimes they're done a bit too even and like that's okay, but I like to have it a little less neat. So like this, and these are basically just these little loops similar to how we've drawn crows, uh, you know, the way we drew a crane. Pretty much all of the birds I've done on this channel will have this style of wing. Uh, now for these, this bottom row of wings, the longer feathers, you're going to curve down and then flick out towards the end, if that makes sense. So it's like a really, really long S curve towards the end, flicking back and adding in these little sort of V's or little sections in between to make it look more like a feather. And you want these to splay a little bit as well. And bring that back. And as they come towards the body, they're just gonna get a little bit smaller as well. Now, once both your wings are finished and you've made the back line of the body a bit more solid, you can add in your small feathers. Now, in this case, your small feathers are pretty much gonna look very similar to dragon scales. They're just gonna be these little uh, scales or maybe even koi fish scales. A lot of the time, feathers and scales, especially the smaller feathers of the body, uh, were drawn the exact same way as scales, but they can be a little bit more random, you know? You don't need to worry about them lining up the way that you do with scales because they are feathers. So they're gonna have a little bit more of a rough look to them. Uh, scales need to line up correctly for them to look right. Whereas, you know, feathers can be a little bit more randomly placed, I guess, because they're just feathers. So we do the feathers down that side of the body and down the other side. And as you can see, because I'm not doing these perfectly and I'm not measuring them out, you can just literally throw them on like that. Now, before we do the long feathers, I just want to point out a progression here. And this is something I don't notice with a lot of Phoenix designs is you've got a progression from these small body feathers, and then it's got these larger, uh, longer shaped feathers here, which grow into these feathers, which have a pattern that starts to emerge on them which eventually grow out into these long feathers. So it's a really nice way to, if you don't know how to layer your tail feathers and you're doing this maybe in a slightly different style, you can always just think that the smaller feathers here would eventually, I guess, grow out to this sort of length here. And the ones underneath that would start to sort of grow out into the longer uh, strands there. That's the way I like to look at it anyways. Now, again, I'm just gonna give you one example for these feathers here, cause they're all the same. And then I will go through and complete them. So. I'll just turn this around. I'm gonna start with this feather here, following my line out, and I may double up on that line. Occasionally I'll double up on it a little bit at the start to give it that thickness at the, uh, at the base that a feather sometimes has. You don't have to do that. Coming all the way around. Uh, now in this case, I think I do want a love heart shape, so I'm gonna split my ovals off into two and come back with a slightly love heart shape at the end there, like this and then you can add your loops into the center of that. And these are all gonna be colored in various ways, so that's gonna look really nice. And now for the actual feather, I'm going to start overlapping some lines that come around like this. Now, every now and then, I'm gonna throw in a stray sort of uh, uh, S-curve that comes out from there, and that's gonna help randomize it and make it look a little bit nicer and less, uh, less static, I guess. You wanna add movement to these things. Uh, the, the biggest mistake I think I see with a lot of Japanese style designs is a lack of movement. Things can look static because the subject matter can be quite simple. And as soon as things look static and not moving, uh, then it's 
it's dead, it's lifeless, you know? So I think adding a little bit of movement to it by adding those various S curves in uh, adds a great deal of detail to it, but also helps uh, make things look a little bit more organic and flowing and a little bit less stale. So adding in those uh, sort of little S curves in between, super important. And I'll just give you guys another little example here. So we've got our regular feather curves that go like this. Every now and then I'll come out to the side. I'll do an S curve that links back in. And from there, I'll continue linking in. An S curve linking in. And so that is gonna add these little bits that aren't neatly folded like the rest of them that sort of come out a little bit. Just gonna add some nice detail. Now, once you've done all of your feathers, your actual phoenix is basically complete. Now, if you wanted to, you could add some Japanese style flames, you know, at the tips of the wings or something like that. It is a, you know, a bird born from fire. Uh, however, you know, there's sort of different depictions of it. And this is what I consider to be a more classic Japanese uh, version of a phoenix, which, like I said, is sort of closer to a peacock. So I'm going to start looking at doing some of the background elements for you now. So coming around the front of the head here, I'm going to add some clouds. Now, this is something that is quite notable with a lot of traditional Japanese designs, is adding clouds around your main subject matter's uh, focus areas, such as the face, and the more detailed areas uh, closer to like the wings. And now that's something I noticed done quite a bit with dragons, uh, phoenixes, even tigers. And I think the reason from that is to sort of keep those areas more simple so that they stand out and you can see what's going on. It creates that uh, contrast of detail that I like to talk about so much. Uh, so I'm going to add that around that front of the head area. And you can also add it around this wing a little bit if you would like to separate the wing from your tail feathers a bit. This can be really tricky and take some practice for sure. So it's up to you whether you'd like to do this. And uh, I'm not entirely sure how this will look, but you do have to sort of overlap your tail feathers a bit. Okay, I think that will be enough. So those uh, clouds are actually going in front of our tail feathers a little bit there. And there's gonna be a little bit more clouds sort of happening up towards the back here. Again, to sort of help separate things uh, from our background elements, even though clouds are part of our background, this will help separate things from the bars that we're going to do, the wind bars. Uh, and again, another reason for that is just to help sort of push the main focal points of the design forward while keeping those background uh, bars in the background where they should be. So I'll just finish adding these clouds in and then we'll get to adding our bars. Okay, once you've added your clouds in and you're happy with where they are, we can add in the bars. As you can see, there's really not a lot of room for these bars and that is a good thing. It means you've filled out your design nicely with your subject matter first and foremost, and the background is filler, you know, it sort of takes up the space in the background. That's what you want, you know, unless you're doing a background style sleeve like we did a couple of weeks ago, you want your sleeve to be primarily made up of your main subject matter. So now to fill in these bars, I'm going to follow around the shape of my sleeve. I'm gonna come out a little bit and then curve in towards, I guess, this central area, like so. Now I'm gonna double up on the line that I just did. And then I'll come out again and curve in. Double up on the line that I did. Curve out and in. Doubling up on my line and curving out and in like this. So that's gonna be like the typical way that I do these bars. And you've seen me do them a uh, you know, hundred times. It's always going to be uh, with that sort of technique unless I learn a new way to do it and I can sort of uh, teach you guys that. Otherwise it's gonna be in that manner. So I'm gonna curve around from the top here and sort of down towards that central area, splitting my line off, curving around again, pretty much following my, the shape of my sleeve and slightly coming outside of it to create those additional curves. Like this. So that's gonna give you the front and back of the top half of the sleeve there. And then looking at this bottom half, uh, I think I'm going to start the bars towards the end here. Coming out from underneath this uh, feather. Down, curving back. Splitting my line off. Coming out and back. Splitting my line. Coming out and back. And in this point, we're sort of heading back towards uh, that direction, towards the right there. Splitting off, coming back. 
and working our way around using that method like that and that's pretty much going to give you your wind bars for the background in that real sort of traditional look uh, they're going to all be done really sort of solid and dark uh, not too much shading or blending on them and like i said that's going to give you a very traditional style look for this uh, phoenix design now i'm going to go ahead and transfer this to some watercolor paper so that we can start the painting process for this one the big only brush set is out now with over 30 hand-drawn original stamp brushes for your use in procreate this set includes nine different honey mask stamps 12 different oni head stamps uh, as well as left and right split head design so that you can create your own unique illustrations now i've also included some classic japanese characters reijin and fujin as well as four other full body oni illustrations so this is a total of six full body character designs as well as four different floral background elements that you can work with to tie it all together and produce beautiful tattoo designs as with all of my other brush sets the tools in this set are not only perfect for creating finished tattoo designs but can also be used for mocking up basic layout for tattoo designs creating coloring pages that allow you to sort of express things with your own colors but they're also perfect to use as an artist reference for your own study and character design now i sat down and took the time to draw and design each of the stamps and brushes in this set by hand and I designed them specifically to work together so that you can create flawless Japanese style illustrations just like this one. Now, if you're interested in picking up my brush set, you can go ahead to my website at daggetdesigns.com.au and pick up one today. Okay, once the design has been outlined onto your watercolor paper and I've done all the bars in the background with pencil and you'll see why in a moment, it's looking really nice, ready to start painting. So I'm gonna start off with my black shading as always solid carbon black and some gray wash. I've got a couple of brushes. These are Taclon synthetic brushes, number five and number six, and some water to wash my brushes out and just to help me with some blending. Now I'm gonna explain the sequence of the bars, uh, just in these small ones at the front here, and then I'll go through and quickly finish the rest of them because uh, there is quite a bit to do here. So for doing these small bars, the method is going to be quite simple. I'm gonna take some solid carbon black on my brush here. I'm going to start to fill these in. Now you can do these solid black or you could do them gray. It's completely up to you how you want these to look. In this case, our Phoenix is going to be quite light. Uh, not a lot of black shading going on there. And so I want to have a nice dark background for contrast. If uh, the Phoenix was really dark, let's say a purple or something like that, then maybe I would have a more lighter sort of background to it. Okay, once you've laid down your black and you're getting pretty close to the line there, you can take your blending brush, feather your edge out like this, and then gently smooth that gray out right till you get to your line there. Like that. Okay, now you're gonna leave a gap where that line is, pretty much where you doubled up on your line. And you're going to start your next line of black or your next bar just following up from there try to get it nice and neat along the line too that's going to really help with uh, the solidness of the design sort of making it look really neat and sharp is going to help with that now bringing it up and around in the same way and again you're going to try and get fairly close to the line on this one so just bring it all the way up and around like this think that will be that will be about good that's where I want it to be take my blending brush feathering out my edge and then working that through to a gray right up to meet our line and again you want that pigment to lay really solid and flat against the line so try not to go out of your lines too much there now, once you've done all of your background bars, this is how it's going to look. So as you can see, it's starting to have that really classic Japanese sleeve design look. And we're gonna go in now and paint our clouds using our gray wash and our medium brush here. So just going into our gray wash and then coming in here to paint some of our clouds. So basically they're gonna be plain gray and I'm just going to work from the center of them out to the ends 
and then leave a little white ring around the edge of our clouds, okay? Now this layer is a little bit dark, so I might do the one in front of it a little bit lighter, just by adding a little bit more water to my wash there. Um, I would keep in mind that this will lighten a little bit as it dries, so actually that might be a good shade to do that sort of part of the cloud there. And as you work these larger areas, if you start sort of in the base, by the time you reach the ends of your clouds, you can see it's already starting to lighten up, then your inks will uh, sort of fade a little bit and get a little bit lighter towards the edges there. So starting nice and heavy in the base and then you can move out and up towards the clouds. And leaving that little ring of white around each of the clouds, really important. Um, I've found the easiest method is to do little circles like I'm doing right here for those little uh, rings on the clouds. Otherwise I find them quite tricky to do. So I just do like little spirals or circles up into the clouds and then just make sure I'm not touching the line to leave my little gap there. And that uh, seems to work really well with that method. So essentially for all of your clouds, you're going to use this same technique. And yes, they look a little bit flat and dull, but we've got the good contrast coming from our very dark background there. So normally I would say if you're doing clouds like this, uh, in this style, you wanna add a few layers of uh, black and gray to it to really help darken it up. But in this case, uh, our background's very dark. So those clouds are actually a nice light element that sort of stand out a little bit. And you're gonna do all your clouds in that same manner. Okay, now once you've done all the clouds, we get into coloring. Now coloring the Phoenix is actually quite difficult, not because it's so detailed and all the uh, complex details and stuff like that, mostly because of the color palette that you need to use when doing a Japanese Phoenix. Uh, I think your most important colors, of course, are gonna be your reds, orange, and yellow. So I've got yellow, orange, azo, mixed with pyrrole red and then plain pyrrole red, but you need to have some cool colors in there as well. So I've got a deep turquoise mixed with phthalo blue, a sap green, and I've also got a muted pink color. And this is gonna sort of create a little bit of balance in there. These are gonna be your softer sort of tones. And then these are really gonna stand out as your vibrant sort of fiery colors. But it can take a little while to learn to sort of incorporate all these different colors. Uh, Phoenix is one of those designs where you kind of go a little bit crazy with color and you know make it your own uh, Whereas you know like a koi fish is really only going to be one or two colors So I'm going to start off With our main body color, which is our turquoise and blue and I'm going to be doing the main area of the body with that Like I said, so I'll mix those two up. I just add that phthalo blue to make it more of a blue hue rather than a green in our uh, turquoise there and I'm going to start by doing the back of the body here. This is going to give me a good feel for the color and how it's going to look. And in this case, the scales are so small that I'm painting straight over the top of them. Now, I've said in the past that that's a no-no. You should always individually paint your scales. And yeah, that's true for the most part. But uh, like I said, when you're doing something this small, painting in between your scales is not only really difficult, it's not really going to look that good either. So I think doing this in this manner is better. For such a small design anyways and i'm still going to add a little bit of blending in there just to give us some little highlight points because you don't want it to be too dark either now coming in from where the neck is i'm going to add some of our blue or turquoise in here working around some of my details and you know don't worry about the head for now although what i will do is come up to that point where the color joins the head and i'll just blend it out gently uh, that way it's not such a harsh transition when I do go to add our color to the face. Now you can continue your color down onto the body like this. There's a point at the top of the wing. These are going to be uh, blue as well. So painting the top half in blue and leaving that feathered edge a little bit uh, just of paper there. And we're going to blend down to that from the top. This is going to help soften some of these transition areas. They're always the hardest. So softening and blending out that blue. And unfortunately, this turquoise is quite difficult to work with. You've got to be quite quick with it. It, um, it dries very, very quickly. Okay, so we've got a nice fade now uh, from a darker sort of turquoise at the tip of the wing. And then it sort of fades back towards that feathered edge. That makes the feathered edge look nice and soft too, which is another really important aspect to this one.
So from there, I'm going to continue down onto the body from where our neck sort of ended off like this. And at this point, I'm going to use the darkest point of my turquoise up closest to the spine uh, or where we've got those spinal feathers. Now I'm going to spin my page around and work down the body by blending out our turquoise, okay? This way it gets lighter and lighter towards the sort of smaller feathers at the base of the body and towards the tail there. Now in terms of doing the face, I really don't want to oversaturate this with dark detail. So I'm going to put a bit of turquoise towards the chin for our dark point. And then I'm just going to work on gently blending that out and around the face. Sort of avoiding some of those smaller feathered areas. Now you can add a little bit of turquoise towards the back of the head there. And gently blend that forward and around your beak. So starting off in this face area, I'm going to go in with my yellow orange Azo. Now this is one of those designs where I, I usually say I'll oh, try to get all of your colors uh, out in one go. So you're doing yellow, do all of your yellow. And then you're doing red, do all of your red, because that's how you're going to tattoo it. In this case, you might see me jump around with colors a little bit. It's been a long time since I've done a Phoenix. And so designing and choosing colors, uh, you know, it can sometimes take a little bit more time if you haven't done it for a while. So I'm just going down the spine now, the spinal feathers of the bird. I want them to be yellow. Okay, so from here, there are some other parts I'm going to do yellow now. One of them is the little veins at the back of our largest uh, feathers, or our longest feathers. So just adding in yellow for those veins. And I think I'm going to do yellow for our first color uh, in the center of our feathers here. This nice detailed portion at the bottom. That first ring, I think I'm just going to paint in yellow for all of them. Once all of my yellows are done, I'm coming in with a bit of my orange color that I made. Just washing, washing my brush a little bit. And coming in with a bit of my orange here. And I'm going to use that uh, to begin with primarily at the front of the neck here. For this area here. And again, I don't want this to be too solid. So for those feathered edges, you can take some water and just blend it back to a nice soft color. It's going to give it a nice rich sort of golden color uh, from your orange back there. Now this orange is also going to be the primary color of our tail feathers. So I'm going to go in and start doing those now. For these smaller feathers at the very base of the tail, I'm going to add a little bit of orange to the tip of them like this. I'll start with those three, a little bit of orange. This one tends to take a little longer to dry so it gives you a little bit more working time and I'll blend that to a light yellow towards the body and that's going to sort of show uh, that they're a little bit younger I guess younger feathers because they're lighter towards where they're growing from and the color only gets a bit more saturated and dark uh, going out from there so that's going to help sort of show the age of those feathers there and now you're going to do the same thing for the largest ring on the outside of these feathers Okay, starting on the outside, uh, nice and dark. And then gently pulling back the color to a light yellow as we sort of head back into our feather. Now orange is also gonna be the main color for our large feathers. I'm gonna demonstrate that on this one here just to keep things simple. I'm gonna start in the middle of the love heart shape, follow the shape around like so, and then follow my center line back like this, okay? So coming around in that manner and then take your blending brush and feather it out towards the soft edges of the feathers and this is going to give it a really nice soft look now you can flip your page around to get to the other side of your feather starting on that center line nice and solid coming around to the center where your love heart joins in like this and then again feathering those edges out to help soften them just like this and that's going to make the edges of your feathers look really soft and fluffy while keeping the middle of the feathers looking a little bit more dense and you can sort of see that has a really nice look to it so your long feathers are all going to be done in that manner now from here i'm going to wash my brush out and go into pyrrole red we don't have any red in this design yet and red is uh, very classic with japanese tattoos really solid color 
going in for this feather at the top of the head. And I'm gonna use solid red to about halfway up and then start blending that out a little bit towards the top. And you wanna sort of keep a little bit of a strip of white on that very top edge for a bit of a highlight or a skin break. Uh, for this little thing at the bottom, solid red and just leaving a little bit of white around the very edge of the whole thing. And that's just gonna give you that little skin break along the edge there. Now for your wings, the, I think the top row of feathers, I would like them to be red, the smaller feathers. So I'm gonna come in and do them red and just leave a white gap around the outside of those feathers. So pretty much solid red on the inside with a bit of white uh, on the outside. And that's gonna help sort of separate things. And we don't have too many other, I guess, skin breaks in this design because it's quite solid. So I wanna add a little bit to this area here and the only other area of red that we're going to do is going to be in the bottom of these sort of love heart shapes, uh, which seems to be a fitting color given the shape. But uh, like I said, with these Phoenix designs, the colors sort of aren't that important as long as you get that nice balance. You can do whatever colors you'd like. I've seen some really nice Phoenixes that have a brown body uh, and then really brightly colored uh, feathers. Brown's still a warm color. Uh, but it's a darker sort of color. So you still had a bit of contrast in the darkness and lightness there. I see a lot of phoenixes done in purples and pinks uh, for more sort of feminine designs, purples and pinks. And then like I said, nice vibrant oranges and reds for the tail feathers. So it's really dependent on how you want it to look yourself. Now, once I've finished my red, I'm gonna go in with my muted pink. Uh, this is going to be for the main feathers on the wing there. I haven't used this color uh, for these wing feathers before, so we'll see how that looks. But I think I'm gonna start from the ends and blend them across. And this is gonna be a really, it's quite a muted color, but this is gonna give us a nice soft color and another sort of darker tone uh, to go off to sort of bounce our contrast off because we've got so many bright colors and I sort of don't wanna do more orange in these large feathers. I don't think that's going to look quite good. So just coming in with our muted pink for these small ones. You could get away with using a purple or maybe another blue. But I thought the muted pink was a nice choice for this because it's uh, quite soft. So using this for my larger feathers. And I'll see you back in a second. Okay, now for our last color, I was going to use sap green. Sort of having second thoughts about that. I'm going to go back in with my turquoise for these rings. So I'm using turquoise now to paint in these little rings on our tail. Uh, like I said, I was going to use sap green, and I think it would still look pretty good with sap green. Uh, but I'd like to have a little bit of consistency with my colors here. I really don't like uh, when the phoenixes have like 30 different colors in them. I think that makes them too complicated and not fun to tattoo either. It's a little bit better when they've just got sort of not, not too limited. We're not talking like American traditional color palette limited, but uh, you know, keeping it somewhat limited in your approach and by doing these rings uh, that same color as the body feathers helps sort of pull through elements from the top half of the design through to the bottom which I talk about a lot when designing uh, sleeve designs is trying to incorporate the top and the bottom half uh, if your subject matter is long or if you've got more than one subject matter in there incorporating the top and the bottom half is a nice way to sort of tie things together so using the turquoise uh, for these parts of the feathers instead of the um, sap green, I think was a really nice way to go. Now that is it for our Phoenix design, guys. I really hope you like this one. I think it turned out fantastic. I really enjoyed doing it, so I hope you give this one a go. Now, if you're new to my channel, make sure to hit the like button and make sure you smash subscribe right now so that you don't miss out on new videos whenever they come out. And leave me a comment down below letting me know what you'd like to see in future videos and what kind of tutorials or content you'd like me to make. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.